What should I? Give me something funny to say before the video starts. I want to put that in so bad. What's up, Finn fans? So, I'm still dying from my allergies. It's not as bad. It's just my one eye. It's real itchy. Um, Adam Gase had a press conference today, and he was talking about everything, about the quarterbacks, about the draft picks, about his system, about the tight ends, and about McDonald. Not Ronald. But TJ. What? So I'm gonna. I wrote things down that I wanted to talk about, and we're gonna pinpoint them one by one. Let's get bothered. First thing he said that really caught my eye. Get it? Cause it's itchy. Is that he doesn't feel like he's been able to run his offense fully in now the three years he's been there. Which I'm like, what? And then he elaborated saying that's because there was injuries. So he put an offense together when he first came to Miami three years ago. Essentially, it was made with Tannehill at the helm and all these players, and then injuries kept happening. So he said he wasn't able to run his offense the way he wanted to and fully. So I'm hoping now that he has the team he wants because he also st stated it took three seasons, but now the roster is closest to the way he's envisioned it. So maybe now that the roster is closest to the way he's envisioned it, he can finally run his offense the way he wants to, and maybe we're gonna start lighting shit up. Because you know how our defense works. If we got a lead, our defense is beast. If we don't, we suck. Six and 10. Next thing he talked about is that he liked the tight end group. He liked who we have with Derby and Gray. He likes the addition of Smythe and Gazeki with that whole combination. So he likes his tight ends. If for everyone who knows, Kevin Gates loves his tight ends. Look at what he did with Julius Thomas in Denver. So I think Gazeki is gonna be good this year. A lot of people are saying rookie of the year. I wouldn't go that far. Talk about the draft. Adam Gates said that he knew that um, one of the good players that they wanted, one of like the three or four that I was mentioning in all of my draft videos, was going to be there at 11 because he knew that the four quarterbacks were going to be taken in the first 10 picks. They knew that they were going to get who they wanted and they wouldn't have to trade up. I'm going to make a video come this weekend about Stephen Ross saying that he wanted them to trade down and what he wanted and how it would have changed the draft. So look out for that video coming this weekend. Next he talks about Kenyon Drake and how he thinks he's matured, which I pray to God because the last time we saw Kenyon Drake, him and Jarvis Landry got kicked out of the Buffalo Bills game because, well, Jarvis Landry is just too passionate and Kenyon Drake was just a rookie, he's young. He said that Kenyon Drake now realizes this is a different job from college. It's a different world, it's a different atmosphere, it's different play styles, speed, and you have to compose yourself differently from college to the pro. He also thinks that they have a guy who's ready to bust out. And we could tell from those last five games of the year when he led the league in rushing that this dude is gonna be a beast. I would say draft him in your fantasy league. Number one running back, eh. Number two, yes. Maybe like third round. Just here's a little fantasy tip for you guys. I'm gonna do that later in the year. He also says that he has a lot of confidence in the quarterbacks they have and that's why they didn't try to trade up to get Rose in or any of the other quarterbacks because they have confidence in the quarterbacks they have. When it came to Brock Osweiler, he said he actually had to be um, convinced to sign Brock Osweiler. Supposedly he wasn't the one who initially was going after Brock Osweiler, it was Tannenbaum and Greer. He said he talked to Brock Osweiler and he got a good sense of where his head's at um, he essentially told him, look, you're not, this isn't for a starting job. You're essentially competing for a backup job. He wanted to know where his head was at, let him know that. He also wanted to know how much the dude wanted in the contract. But it made me feel better about the whole Brock Osweiler situation because now Gase let him know what the situation is. And he also knows where um, Osweiler's mindset is at, which is good because Osweiler um, played great under Gase before he signed with the Texans, like I've said a thousand times. So he knows which Osweiler he's getting. Hopefully, the years that he's played for other teams hasn't dampered it, and I'm hoping Gase can still get the good stuff out of Osweiler, because if we can get that Osweiler that Gase had in Denver, it's a reliable backup, and he's young. Next thing he talked about was the wide receiver room, and the wide receiver group. 
and he said that Kenny Stills and Amendola are leading the group, which makes sense because they are the veterans and they have the most experience, especially Amendola. I'd probably have Amendola be the captain of the wide receiver room just because he's been around and knows what he's talking about. Finally, the thing that I wanted to talk about the most. The quarterback talk was one of the things he talked about. He felt that Tannehill is coming along great. Um, he still has a lot of work to do. Um, he still has a lot of doctor stuff to do, but he is going to be there for training camp, for mini camp, which is coming up soon, and for preseason. He's ready to play. Um, he said he's confident. Tannehill hasn't wavered at all. He's still the same Tannehill. He has 100% confidence in him. But the thing I wanted to talk about the most was um, TJ McDonald. They asked him, is TJ McDonald moving to linebacker? And I'm going to read the direct quote of what he said. TJ is playing safety. And if we make adjustments, we make adjustments. He's not moving to linebacker. So essentially that means that the Dolphins pretty much are going to be running a 4-2-5 defense. Having three safeties on the field um, probably most of the time just because of the way they play. I wish he would have him play linebacker, but he said when we make adjustments, we'll make adjustments. So I'm hoping that you know, when he sees him play, maybe in training camp or for a couple preseason games, they understand, well, yeah, we should move him to linebacker. But I think that they like what they have with um, Baker and Kiko and then the other middle linebacker. Like, I think he, they like what they have, so they're keeping TJ McDonald at safety and they're just going to have a three safety set, which, hey. But that's what I picked up from his press conference. Um... I'm noticing that he's very happy with the roster he has now, and like he said, it took him three seasons to finally get the closest to what he envisioned, and then he also was talking about how he couldn't run his scheme fully. Well, now you got your closest to your the roster you want, so you better run your scheme fully, and maybe we'll see it on the field. Maybe all of a sudden the Dolphins are going to be scoring 30, 40 points a game, which would be amazing. Well, do I see that happening? No. Um, especially with you got so many new players on the team and then if it's a new scheme and you haven't been able to run it you got to teach them all and then there's gonna be hiccups so I see like the first four games being like two and two one and three and then taken off because that's normally how it works with new players and a new scheme if that is what he's doing finally running his scheme is it takes about a month for the players to get in the groove and pick it up but in a whole T.J. McDonald isn't moving to linebacker from what they're saying. Um, he has a lot of faith in Tannehill. Brock Osweiler, he had to be convinced to get Brock Osweiler, but after being convinced and talking to Brock, he feels comfortable, loves the tight end group. Um, they were happy at 11 because the quarterbacks were taken. It's just a bunch of things. I'm going to do a video Saturday talking about how Ross wanted them to trade down and how trading down would have changed our draft for now and the future. So look out for that Saturday. Um, but that's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hit the like button. Comment below. You guys are amazing at commenting. Don't forget to check out my other channel, BitBoys. YouTube.com slash BitBoys. Putting a ton of stuff out Monday through Friday. Funny stuff. Go check it out. And I will see you guys Saturday. Which today is Thursday. So I'll see you guys. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. Bins up. That our boy, the beast from the East Coast, Cameron Wake, is number 74 on the list of 100 best for 2018. Am I happy about that? Yeah, it's pretty good. Am I? Do I think he should be higher? I don't know. I gotta see who's 